22. Let's read verses 1 to 11. Psalm 22, verse 1. Ako po muna, and then please follow. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Let's pray. Lord, please bless uh, your word, Lord. Uh, give us wisdom, Lord. Give us open heart and mind, and please forgive us of all our sins. And may you be glorified in this hour. In Jesus' name, Amen. Na po kayo. So, uh, verse 1 of this psalm might ring a bell for everybody since it's a familiar uh, phrase spoken by, by our Lord Jesus Christ when he was on the cross. And some people, like, they believe that he quoted this while he was on the cross, but others differ. But whatever it is, uh, we can't deny the fact that as we try to like study his word there are uh, full of proofs that we can see that the Bible is really all about Jesus Christ so yun. and just allow me to quote Spurgeon sabi niya po dito, David and his afflictions may be here in a very modified sense but as the star is concealed by the light of the sun he who sees Jesus will probably neither see nor care to see David so every time that uh, for me personally this is a very good encouragement in studying his word because every time uh, we feel lazy reading the Bible let's remind ourselves that the Bible is all about him and every time we feel lazy studying his word we uh, rob ourselves and not him of all the blessings that we can get from his word so <clears throat> Sabi pa niya, it is, this psalm is a photograph of our Lord's saddest hours, the record of his dying words, the lacrimatory of his last tears, the memorial of his expiring joy. So that is just the, uh, like, it's like a type, and I believe that we can get a lot of blessings out of it. But let's focus on the perspective of David here. So, so mga unang verses, so verse 1, we can see, as we read it a while ago, that this is probably one of David's uh, downest times in his life. Like, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And this is a struggle not only for some, but this struggle is common among all Christians. That at times, uh, we pray for something, we desire to have something, and then uh, at times it feels like, God is ter has turned his back away from us. And it's a very good uh, testament on how we can always uh, rely on God, as especially in this passage. And in verse 2, O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I'm not silent. So, so dito, this is the most intense suffering God's servant can know. At kung titingnan po natin sa verse 7, All they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head. And verse 12, makikita po natin dito yung suffering ni David from uh, uh, the scorn of other people. 
Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. Verse 13. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. So, hindi lang ito yung pinakamahirap na time kay David because of this. We can also read in verse 14. Verses 14 and 16. I am poured out like water. This is the pain that he is feeling. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. So we can see there's a lot of uh, similarities on, how, on what the Lord Jesus Christ experienced. But these uh, passages show us that David is in the most down part of his life because of the people around him and also because of the pain that he is feeling but uh, this is it's like for in a perspective mas mahirap yung feeling na naipabot niya sa atin sa mga unang verse wherein he felt that uh, during this time sa buhay niya he felt that God is not there to hear his prayer and this is a very uh, I believe as I give devotions in some, it's a recurring, ins uh, recurring, uh, parang yun yung flow ng book of Psalms. Like David will uh, praise God, and then the first thing that he does is that he reminds himself of everything that he experienced. Para parang yun yung pinaghuhugutan niya ng lakas during downtimes. And makikita po natin na yun yun. Hindi lang siya nag, uh, si struggle because of the people around him or the pain that he is experiencing. He is struggling in, uh, spiritually because he felt like God isn't there. But in verse 1, balik po tayo, this is a testament of his faith because no matter what situation he, is, he was in, he did not fail to claim God as his God. Inumpisa niya, my God, my God. So, this is a great comfort for all of us because every time that we experience something, like the message this morning is a very good, uh, it's a very uh, great blessing for, all, for most of us, I believe, for all of us, I believe, is because uh, different people experience different suffering. But the truth uh, and the only thing that is sure is that it will happen to all of us. And the comfort is that for us Christians, we have God to run to and every time like for example we experience something and then we pray there is sure comfort for all of us pakatas natin and even during we're praying right and mapapaisip tayo how do unbelievers deal with their problems and maawa tayo sa kanila because they don't have God unlike us diba and <clears throat> yun so, ang ginawa po ni David, of course, he owned God as his God, and that's true. And I think this is a very good start in dealing with problems, is that you own God as your God. And what, in the midst of his anguish, he also remembers God's past faithfulness in Israel. So, makikita po natin to sa verses 4 and 5. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. The good thing is that we are surrounded by godly people and whatever they're going through, uh, when we see our brethren uh, succeeding or having something that they prayed for for a long time, it's, it can help us, it can serve as an encouragement to us. Because it's not only, we can not only get encouragement from our uh, own experiences, we can get encouragement from the experiences that we see on how God blesses his children. So ito, David, uh, he reminded uh, himself of the greatness of God in uh, Israel. And this, I believe, uh, short testimony lang po, this is a very good, this is a really a blessing to me because uh, as you remember my sister, our sister, uh, like, she's been in the dark for a lot of years. And then, like, maybe it was, of course, 
uh, she experienced a lot of bad things and the good thing is that the crisis that he she experienced made her uh, like set her priorities and now she starts it to like attend church and you you can really see that before you can you, you couldn't even talk to her about spiritual matters but now she's very open to that and i believe that is a really great blessing is that god uses people like the lives of other people to remind us of his greatness and we can use it during our uh darkest moments not only did he uh remind himself of the greatness of god uh, in israel he also reminded himself of his own personal experiences with god makita po natin to sa verses 9 and 10 Yung, kumbaga, ito yung gratitude ni David sa Panginoon. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. So, dito makikita natin, even before tayo panganak, nandun yung goodness ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. And how much more, the moment na lumaki na tayo, we can always be sure that God will be there for us. And, uh, studying this uh, passage is really a great blessing and I hope uh, like this will also be a blessing for everybody. And in verse 19, David turns to God as the only one who will help. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me. Like, let's run to God like as if he's the only way and of course he's the only way. The our mistake is that most of the time during problems is that our logic becomes our God. Like we think of a more logical, easier way out of a problem without even consulting God about it. And Nehemiah is an example of that. He prayed for months before uh, starting to do the work of the Lord. And how are we going to suppose? Uh, how are we supposed to do the work of the Lord without the help of the Lord? And how are we going to get through something that we're going through without the help of the Lord? Let's uh, run to God first and foremost. This should be the default in our life. And uh, reading the Psalms of David, this is very true to him because he never fails to run to God every time he, experience, he experiences something. And we might have the same will as God. Like, for example, we want something... But, and we know that it is the will of God. But sometimes God's method is so much more different than our method. Like, both God and us, or for example, you, you want to reach, uh, reach a certain point in your life. But then we forget the journey. That all the lessons that we can get, that God will uh, teach us as we go along our journey. And the, I believe the most remarkable thing that I've heard from the preaching of his word is that never like get ahead of his timing because sabi dito so proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths and galatians 6 9 and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's not be wary of doing good things for the Lord. Ecclesiastes 3.11 He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the works that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Genesis 18.14 Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time he appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. This is, this is a very good, like a powerful statement from the Lord like is anything too hard for the Lord and we know this but the problem is that sometimes uh, it's hard for us to apply th this principle in our life. nothing is too hard for the Lord and to finish both so Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as have as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The good thing is that no matter how, like, what we go through in life, or no matter how we want to get out of it, if we think that our plan is the best, the comfort is that God's 
plan is so much more better than what we have in mind. So, salamat po. And let's pray. Lord, salamat po, Panginoon, sa inyong salita. Salamat po sa uh, privilege.